lessening the waste when it comes to your food. We were chatting off the top about food prices and we as Canadians are really bad about letting food go bad. So that's why we want to spend some time talking about how you can preserve them. But you've got a different take on why prices are through the roof. Yeah, I sort of saw this coming spring last year with okay. all the heat in California, specifically in California. That was the driving factor. The farmers and the gardeners weren't able to plant their gardens and get their produce started. And it's sort of a domino effect, right? Yeah. And even though we get a lot of food from South America, when California is unable to produce it, they also import it from South America. And because our population is so much smaller, right. we become less on the food chain, unfortunately, which is why I started a vegetable garden this year, because I yes. was like, okay, I'm gonna make my own produce because I don't wanna pay $6.99 for a cauliflower. Right. But that's which our is, reality that today. That is so crazy It's to me. crazy, but, and everybody who's planted a vegetable garden knows you can't control when the produce is coming. Right. So you want to be able to save it as much as possible. My yeah. friends joke that the crisper in their fridge is called the rotter because <laughs> everything it's dies terrible. in the crisper. So let's make everything last as long as possible. And I'm going to show you some easy tips to do that today. Okay. Okay. Have you seen these before, Tracy? Ye no. You haven't seen these are herb savers. Oh, okay. okay. Very simple contraptions. Mm -hmm. Basically, this is one's my favorite. These are all mine, by the way. I've tried all of them, so I am an expert on this one. I don't doubt it at all. <laughs> You're, he's such a big veggie guy. I am, I'm a foodie in a whole different way. That's very so, good. So this is a simple one from William Sonoma. It's probably yeah. the most expensive, but it works the best. So you have a little tray like this. You're gonna mm -hmm. lay your herbs down inside so the stems go through the bottom little hole like that. Okay. okay? Then you're going to put it into the ribbed piece like that. Okay. Lid goes on like this. Okay. Yep. Nice and crisp and closed. And then this over here oh, is just water. a little container of water. Sits in. Smart. Brilliant. The Very reason smart. I love this one is because it lays fat, flat. Yeah. These guys, I tried them as I did with this one, but what happens is when you lift it up, and I'm going to pop it up here, everything falls out. Right. So what I realized was these are fantastic for asparagus. Oh yeah, so you can, you can put stand your them up in there. asparagus in there. They'll stand up a little bit better, yeah. and down you go. So I love that for asparagus because herbs and asparagus work exactly the same way. Got they it. suck moisture out of the ground. Mm -hmm. So if you provide them moisture, like cut flowers, they'll last longer. Nice. Okay. These little guys here. So this Don't is to the save the way. rest of your your rest of your pepper. Right. And, and the rest of your lime. And this is the rest of your lime. Yeah, so when I originally got them, I thought, oh, they've got some fancy plastic or it's great. No. <laughs> All they do is they keep the food in there and they keep the ethylene gas from getting to everything else. Okay. Now, ethylene gas is the key here. That is a ripening agent that fruit produces to ripen everything else. Right. Apples are one of the worst. So if you put a crisper full of apples on one side yeah. and onions and everything else on the other side, yeah. the apples will actually start to ripen everything else. Oh, that's good to know. Because yeah, I'm so. doing it wrong right now. <laughs> Most that's, people are, believe it or not. That is very good to know. So when you go to the grocery store, you'll often see mushrooms in paper bags. Have yep. you noticed that beside the yeah. mushrooms? That's to put the mushroom in the paper bag to keep the moisture off. Okay. That also works with apples. Put your apples oh. in paper bags instead of plastic. And then also still in the fridge? Still in the fridge, that's okay. no problem. So you're gonna put them inside, you're gonna do them up, and you're gonna make sure you write very clearly what's on the bag so that people know what's there's apples in there, because right. out of sight, out of mind. That's right. right. But that'll keep the ethylene gas from spreading around your fridge. Another way to do it. These are bad guys. It's your fault. Yes, yeah, bad apples, That's bad apples. why my broccoli's going bad. So from an environmental standpoint, when you see vegetables wrapped in plastic, we all get a little anxious about that, right? Because yeah. it's extra packaging. You think, do we why? really need that? For a cauliflower, so good, because it keeps all the ethylene gas in the cauliflower. Do not remove your vegetables when they come in the plastic bags. Oh, really? Yeah, leave them in there as long as possible. And what you're starting to see is a lot of the recycling companies will actually take the heavy plastic like this mm -hmm. and recycle it now. Okay. So leave them in there. Yes. Yeah. So let's say I only want half of this. Do I cut the half that I want and then leave it in the rest in the bag? Or you can rewrap it in plastic. Rewrap it in plastic. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Same with your bananas. Everybody mm -hmm. always thinks we have to hang bananas. Mm -hmm. Hanging bananas is very important. Mm -hmm. but Keeping them in the plastic is also very important because it keeps all the ethylene gas right where it should be. Okay. So it'll help ripen the green ones. Yes. When they're all ripe, then you open it up to air it out yeah. and you keep it exactly where you want it. Interesting. Okay, keep going. Okay. You want to yeah, talk? keep oh, going. Let's talk about carrots because this is a fun one for me because this is one I didn't know. All right. Carrots and beets and anything that comes in with tops. Yeah. You got to remove the tops right away. Right. You actually knew that? I, well, I, my Leo does that. I don't know why he does it. <laughs> I like that. My Leo does it. My Leo me. does it. So the reason you want to do it is you think about how these grow. Mm -hmm. So the, the greens grow out of the root. The root is the storage unit for the greens. Okay. So the greens will continue to suck the nutrients out of the root. Oh. 
Now we do eat some of the greens. We'll eat beet greens and turnip tops. Yeah. But for the most part, it's this part we want, the root. So the longer you leave the tops on, the yeah. less nutrients are in the root. Okay. Get them cut off I'm right away. I'm such a princess. I never asked him the reasoning behind it. There you go. Uh, let's <laughs> it's like, good, the tops are all gone. Perfect. You want to talk about onions? Yeah, so what do we do with these guys? I find that they last pretty well no matter what you do with them. Is they that the do. Wrong answer? No. You know, so I'm opening up some pantyhose here. Yeah, I'm kind of wearing it out. Uses, What's happening nobody right now? Nobody uses pantyhose really more, <laughs> anymore. You put your onions in the pantyhose. Because what, what happens is this actually prevents, you know, the green shoots from growing. Yes. So, yeah, this actually yeah. will slow down that process. Tie a knot, put another onion in. And you and just hang keep it going. up in your kitchen. It's going to look so pretty. You don't hang this anywhere anybody's mm. going to see it. But this is what's going to prevent your onions and your garlic from shooting up green shoots. So still put it in your pantry. Yeah, you can, you can hide it. You can put it in the pantry? You yeah. can put it in the pantry, keep it in but the dark. Do this. Cool, absolutely, but do it this way. Now I have one more. We've got time. Yeah, we've got time. We've got time. Let's we talk about time. potatoes. All right. Now, potatoes are one of the most misunderstood not vegetables. I'm so and, sorry. Yeah, it's true. Uh, if you've ever noticed, potatoes will go green. Yes. And they start sometimes sending out little shoots under yeah. the eyes. There's two things that are happening with potatoes, mm -hmm. okay? Potatoes, again, that whole thing is a giant food source for the plant that should grow. But we're okay. trying to stop it before it grows, okay? Right. If it starts turning green, it means it's gotten too much light. Mm. The green part is actually toxic. You oh, can't eat a green potato. And people think, oh, I'll just shave off the green part and eat the rest of it. No, yeah. that green part is going all the way through even if you can't see it. So you need to not use your green potatoes. Right. However, you can cut them, put them in a paper bag, put them in the garage. Next spring, you're gonna plant them, okay? Oh. If you start seeing the eyes coming out of the potatoes, yeah. that's okay. You can actually scoop the eye out and still eat the potato as well, long good, as that's it, what we do. Yeah, as long as it hasn't gone green. We totally take those off and still eat it. It's true, it's true. The other okay. thing I want to point out, with potato storage, put them in containers like these. Oh, really? Don't put them in your fridge at all. Yeah, absolutely. And I love we this one. We don't put them in the fridge. But yeah, no. in the garage in the back, yeah. I love this one because it's just a big red bin. It's very it nice. In, but it's got the holes in the top to let the ethylene gas out. Oh, nice. Simple. These are good tips. Creative, and it'll make your food last longer. I love it. Really nice.